Hi guys. So we're going to be getting into a topic called related rates. Oops, this thing is already moving on me. Stay right there. Okay. So related rates is basically a discussion on if you are, you know, let's say you have a circle and for example, this is perfect right here. This is the area of a circle. And if you have the area of a circle, if the radius is changing at a certain rate, how fast is the area changing? And related rates problems are always about how fast things change over time, which is why we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So in these related rates problems, we're always going to put related rates. I butchered that. I haven't used this in a while, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go over here. I asked you to do this for homework, so I just want you guys to confirm that you guys are with me as far as this goes, and then we're going to get into some really good problems, okay? So if I take the derivative of this with respect to t, and I'm just going to go right over this, that means I want to find out if I take the derivative of a with respect to uh, t, that should be dA over dt is equal to, now pi is a constant, so he's just chilling out. So this winds up being 2 pi r times dr over dt because your radius, so this should be 2r times dr over dt. I just kind of put it out front, okay? So again, every time we take the derivative um, with the um, related rates problems, it's always with respect to time. So this is, you should all recognize it as Pythagorean theorem. And the cool thing about this is you're going to take the derivative with respect to t again. So again, we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So we would have 2a times dA oops, over dt plus 2b times db over dt equals 2c times dc over dt. So let's go back and let's talk about these. If this is a right triangle, and we're actually going to do an application problem later, um, this is um, a, this is b, and this is c. So dA over dt is basically saying how fast is the length of this side changing over time. Like if there's something leaning against the wall, because we're going to do a ladder problem. So as the ladder slides down the wall, how fast is this um, side changing? dB over dt is how fast is this length changing, and dc over dt is how fast this guy is changing. So if you look at this guy over here, you'll notice I changed the a to a v because this is technically volume equals pi r squared h, and this is the volume of a cylinder. And I hope you look over here, it's r squared times h. So on this side of the equation, we're going to have to use, yes, the product rule. Good for you. So the, right, the left-hand side is simply dv over dt, which is the rate at which the volume is changing over time. Okay. So again, this is the rate at which the volume is changing over time is equal to, so I'm just going to do pi times, and so the derivative of r squared is going to be 2r times dr over dt times h, because again it's the derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second, which you should all say is dh dt times the first, which is pi r squared, because that pi got attached to the r squared term. So all the rules that you've learned always come into play. So as you check your work, I sincerely hope that you are on um, on board as far as this goes. So give me one second and I'll be right back with a nice problem. Okay, so we have two problems here that we're going to start off with. And the first one is a pebble is dropped into a compound causing ripples in the form of concentric circle, circles. So just imagine you drop it in the pond and it's like bloop, 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 and it's going out. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. When your radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area changing? So if you go back and look at this, the first thing you want to ask yourself is self, what are we, I'm going to change this to pink, what are, uh, what's the formula that we're going to use? So you're looking at concentric circles and you want to find out how fast the area is changing. So I hope you're saying to yourself, well, I'm feeling a circle. So in the area of a circle is pi r squared. So if I take the derivative of this, we did it in the do now. Um, so it's dA over dt is equal to 2 pi r times dr over dt. So I hope you're staring at this and you're saying, and my question to you is how many um, variables do you see? And just take a look at it and yes, there are three. This is one, the rate at which the area is changing, the actual rate itself, radius itself, and the rate at which the radius is changing. So you're asking ourselves if there's three variables, we should know what two of them are. So if I go back and look, when the radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second, the radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. Who is that? 
I hope you say dr dt. So we know that dr dt is equal to one foot per second. And it says when your radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area changing? So if you look at it, what rate the area is changing, that's your dA over dt. And that's what we're on the hunt for. So when we go back into that sentence, we should recognize the radius is four. So as I said to you before, that you should know two of your three variables. So if you just plug it in, we have dA over dt is equal to two times pi times your radius at that time times one. So this should equal eight pi. So the rate at which your area is changing is eight pi. You guys think of the units. What would the units be? Hmm. <laughs> Aha, yes, feet per second squared because this is the rate at which your area is changing, okay? If you want rewinding, I'll look at that again. Right now, let's go on to number two, where it says air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Find the rate at which the radius is changing when the radius is two feet. So air is being pumped into a spherical balloon. So we have a sphere, right? And it's the rate is cubic feet per minute, cubic feet. So I'm hoping that you guys are saying to yourself, ah, this is the volume of a sphere. And no, I don't expect you to remember what the volume of a sphere is. But if you do, that's wonderful. I'm going to tell you that it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So it's being pumped into the balloon at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Who is that? Like if I take the derivative of this, again, we're taking the derivative with respect to time. Again, this is going to be dv over dt. And by the way, if you want to pause this and go and find the derivative of this yourselves and then compare it to mine, gosh, I would love that. I think you know that. So if I do that, this is going to be 4 pi r squared times dr over dt. If you look again, yet again, there are three variables. And you want to ask yourself, which one are we looking for and which ones are we given? So we should be given two of the three. So when it's being pumped into a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute, I hope you're all telling yourselves that that's the rate at which the volume is changing because volume is measured in cubic units. So this is 4.5, okay? It says find the rate of change of radius. So when it says find the rate of change of radius, yes, that's dr dt. That's who we're looking for. So dr over dt is equal to, um, I don't know. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. And we know that r is equal to 2 at that moment. So we're just going to plug our stuff in over here. So we have 4.5 is equal to 4 pi times 2 squared, and we're on the hunt for dr over dt. If I square 4, uh, 2, that's 4 times 4 is 16 pi. So my answer is dr over dt is equal to 4.5 over 16 pi. Now when you put it into your calculators, folks, to get a decimal, please put 16 pi in parentheses. Okay, so if you do 4.5, which I'm going to do right now because it's sitting in front of me, 4.5 divided by parentheses. I just almost forgot parentheses. Meanwhile, I told you guys not to forget. You should have 0 0.0895. So we're going to go point, whoops, point 0 0.0895, right? And that's going to be, because it's radius, it's a linear, it should be feet per minute. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Let's move on. Okay, so I really like this problem. Um, you have a 13-foot ladder is leaning against a house. Um, um, it's leaning, a 13-foot ladder is leaning against a house when the base starts to slide away. I hope I'm not on that ladder. By the time the base is 12 feet from the house, the base is moving at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall at that moment? So we have a ladder sliding down a wall. Whoops, let me just get myself ready here. What's going down the wall, like going down. So if I asked you what formula would you want to use for a problem like this, because what are you envisioning? And I hope you say, oh, I'm envisioning a right triangle. So if I'm envisioning a right triangle, whoops, come on. Let me go over here. Okay, it changed on me. I'm envisioning a right triangle. I'll call this side A, I'll call this side B, I'll call that side C. So that means that I'm going to be using A squared plus B squared is equal to c squared. So if I take my derivative, I'm going to come down here and do part a. You should have 2a times dA over dt plus 2b times db over dt is equal to 2c times dc over dt. How many variables are in this equation, you guys? Hit pause and talk to each other about how many there are. Thank you for coming back to me. I hope you said six, and there are a lot of them. You have a, b, c, the rate at which 
uh, side A is changing, the rate at which side B is changing, and the rate at which side C is changing. So it says, so let's talk about some things we already know, okay? So we already know, um, let's take a look over here, 13 foot ladder. So this is the ladder because the ladder is leaning against the house and it's going to slide down the wall and it's going to slide out. So we know that this is equal to 13. And then it says by the time the base is 12 feet from the house. So here's the base of the ladder over here. So I'm gonna say that this is 12 feet from the house. So how would you find A? I hope you said by using Pythagorean theorem, so a squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Some of you might recognize that as a 5, 12, 13, so we know that. Now, the other thing that they told us is the base is moving at a rate of 1.5 feet per second. Who is that? If it's moving away at 5 feet per second, I hope you all said, ah, that's dB over dt. So yes, dB over dt equals 1.5. That's pretty fast. Um, so now, as it slides down the wall, that means who are we looking for? Because it's saying how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall. I hope you all say we're looking for dA over dt. That's who we're looking for. And by the way, if it's going down, what do you think this rate is going to be? You got it. It's going to be negative. You, you got it. So now we have one, two, three, four variables but we need to know five, and we're looking for dA over dt. This is the guy we're looking for. So I know what A is, B is, dB over dt, I know what C is. Do I know what dC over dt is? And ask yourselves, what is dC over dt? Hit pause, please, and talk about what dC over dt is. I pause with you. I hope you said the rate at which the ladder length is changing, right? So the question you want to ask yourself, is the ladder length actually changing? It's sliding down the wall, so is his length actually changing? And if you said no, the rate at which the ladder is changing is equal to zero. So now if you come over here and you plug everybody in, all your variables, you should be able to tell me who dA over dt, what dA over dt is. And I'm going to go find it too, and I will be right back. Did you get negative 3.6 feet per second? I hope so, because that's what I got. So we have now that dA over dt is equal to 3.6. This is negative 3.6 feet per second, okay? I'm going to hit pause, and we're going to go on to part B, and I'm going to clean some of this up. Okay, so now B is asking us, what is the rate at which the area of the triangle formed by the ladder, the wall, and the ground is changing at that moment? So if we're talking about the area of a triangle, what is the area of a triangle? And we should all say area is equal to 1 half base times height. In this case, your base and height are A and B respectively because they always form a right angle. So 1 half A times B is the area of the triangle. So if I look at the A times B, please tell me that when you take the derivative, what rule do you need to use? <gasps> yes, you need to use the product rule. So if I take the derivative of A, I get dA over dt is equal to 1 half. So now what you could do is you could just kind of go like that, leave your 1 half out, and then do your product rule. So it would be dA over dt times b plus dB over dt times a. So now we're just going to plug everything in because we know what these are from part a because this is the moment that this is all happening in. So we're just going to go plug those in. You guys plug them in and we'll come back. So the rate at which, whoops, ugly. The rate at which your area is changing should be negative 17.85. You got it. Square, come on, square feet per second. I don't know why this is giving me a hard time now. Second. Okay, so that should be the rate at which your area is changing. Now we're going to move on to part C. So part C is super interesting because it's asking you the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the ground is changing. So to me, it's talking about, whoops, do I have time? Oh, Jesus. Right over here. Theta, okay? So I'm losing time and I'm losing my mind. Annotate, all right? <laughs> Look at this, it won't stop. So for you guys, I'm gonna leave it to you guys. When you do something like this, when you're doing theta, I hope it tells you in your minds that trigonometry has to come into the party. So I'm going to leave you with that thought because I'm running out of time on the video and I'm interested to see interested to see if you guys get part C and if anything we'll go over it in class on Wednesday. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go back and relook and yes, you know I'm going to assign you a couple of problems so try part C out and then I'm going to assign you some problems to test out. Good luck.